Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. Welcome to Make and Take Tuesday. This is a little weekly series where we use a new product, uh, tool, technique, design, paper collection, and we make something lovely with it. Uh, for 2023, many of you asked me to do another through the year project with folios. So I chose Graphic 45's flower market collection to use as our base because they have these wonderful monthly sheets. And if this is your first time finding one of these videos, you can find the tutorials for the March and the February and January in my playlist. Look under um, Make and Take Tuesday. You'll find them there. This month we're doing April, which is absolutely beautiful with all of these gorgeous daisies and um, I think daisies are the predominant theme, and I don't know the names of some of these, honestly. Uh, so if you do, you can tell me in the comments section. But because these, these papers are beautiful, but because you only get two sheets for each month, and the patterns are very repetitive, see the pattern on the back of this is the same here, we needed to, we needed to add in order to fill out the folio. So each month when I do this, I dig through my stash to find papers that will coordinate. Some of these papers are not going to be still available. However, if you search your stash, I almost guarantee to you that you will find some things that will work. And as we go along, I'll share some tips for how I pull papers. So for this folio, this April folio, you're gonna need the two eight by eight April pages. You're going to cut this cut apart sheet up and I'll show you how to do that in the tutorial. And this sheet we're gonna keep just as it is, whole. Then you need the two 12 by 12s. And again, this sheet you're going to cut up and this sheet you keep whole. Then go into your stash. I found from Cottage Life this blue stripe. And if you'll see, it's a very good color match for the blue flowers and the blue on the butterfly from this collection. So I look for hues that are there and then I pull papers that will match even if they're not from the same collection. But then we do, I do have a scrap of this blue botanic from the 12 by 12 patterns and solids for flower market and I have this pink botanic from flower market. So those are the graphic 45 papers we have this month. Then I went searching and I found a Kaiser Craft flower shop. And if you'll look, I'll show you. I didn't use these papers. I just wanted to show you the collection. So what I do is I look for hues that match. And this is good. This is a good fit. So I pulled this sticker sheet from that collection. And then this print. Look how nice it looks. It's because the even though it's slightly different, the hues are basically the same. So we can use this with this. It's a good color match. And it's a floral theme, so that works too. So I have this sheet, I have two of these, because I also felt like this petite floral also worked. So looking for contrast, right? Because these are all very busy. This is a simpler print. So that's how I chose this piece. This is um, also from Kaiser Craft Flower Market. Then the cut apart sheet has a lot of images that will work with this. Then we've got this pretty open window with, again, the blue butterflies. And you just hold the papers up. And if it makes your eye happy, you go, this will work. If your eye goes, no thank you, then you know that's not the one. And on the back of this, it's got a beautiful gingham check. And that's one of the things I want to do is I want to bring in some solid geometric or pattern pieces that are not floral to provide a little bit of visual relief from these very busy floral pages, which I love, but you need to mix it up. And then I found this all over text. This is such a good match. It could be part of this collection. It's really cool. If you look through your stash, you'll find stuff. Then I found... Here's more of that blue gingham. This pretty little piece that has this open window that also has the blue gingham. A cut apart sheet. 
that has a lot of little bits and pieces that will work to make our folios more interesting. And then to change up that pink and that strong pink and blue, I found this green dot. And I love how it looks with the floral. So I pulled that in as well. Again, providing contrast and a little bit of visual relief from the heavy um, patterned papers here. So go through your closet, go through your stash. And then I pulled this one from Prima. This is Prima Tales of You and Me. And I may just use a couple of like the postcard type pieces to tuck in pockets and stuff like that. But mostly I found this collection did not work. It's a totally different, see? Even though it's got the pinks, it's like a different color family. And it's got this um, very different green. This is a very cool green. This is a very warm green. So that's the other thing you want to look for is color tones. But like the postcard pieces, I can cut this out without the floral frame around it. This will work. This perfume bottle or ink bottle, I'm not sure which it is. I can cut this out and it will work. So those provide us some little tuck-in pieces, all right? So that's the patterned papers. And then from my stash of cardstock, I went in and looked and I pulled a cream. And I just wanna show you why I pulled cream. See how pretty that is with that? Then I got this Stampin' Up! This is called, I think, Moonlight Blue. And it's a very good, it's a deeper hue of this blue in the floral paper, so it works. And then this is Garden Rose, which picks up on the deeper hues in some of these daisies. So it works. And see, it's a deeper hue of this basic background sort of mauve pink that's in this paper collection. So that's the papers. And now that you've seen that, you can go start digging through your stash, look for papers that will work with the flower market papers. I guarantee you have some. Because if you like this sort of vintagey uh, paper, you probably have more of it. You may even have some Graphic 45 in your stash that will work with this. I did not, but you may. So now that we've, I've shown you the papers, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna build the folio. Before we start cutting up the folio, I wanna show you the things that I pulled from Flower Market. And so from your die cut ephemera, you want this little one, this is Bloom. You want these daisies and this daisy. You want all these little blue flowers. There are a bunch of these little tiny blue flowers that are a perfect match. And then this butterfly that matches the butterfly and this little tag. And this little banner that says bloom. So that's from the die cut ephemera. Then from the chipboard, you want this piece that says joyful. This is the match for the um, paper collection. From your journal cards, you want these two three by fours. These are actually the same three by four. This is the front, this is the back and we will use those. And then, I think I have more in here, yeah. This little butterfly is actually, I think, from Cottage Life. So pull that, and then this little butterfly is from Flower Market, so pull that. And I think that's all that is from Graphic 45. So what are we making? Here's our April folio, eight and a half by eight and a half with three eighth inch spines, and it is stunning. We stitched our cover together. Here's our little tag, little sequins, just to add a bit of sparkle. Inside the front cover, this is what these paper collections look like when you put them together. They really work. It is so fun. We have this great little magnetic file folder pocket here with a couple of little journaling spots. And our little turn tab goes up here. This is magnetized, so it holds these in place. Then we have this sweet little ATC envelope with a couple of little journaling spots in there. Then we have our front flap page that opens out. We've got room for a nice photo here. Here's a little tag pocket. So itty bitty journaling spot, which is so cute and so fun. Then this is magnetized and it opens over to this flip page, which has a little pocket here with little tiny tags 
and ephemera pieces in there. More of these beautiful daisies here. We've taken our three by four card and turned it into a pocket for the other three by four card and a tag. So that's fun. And you can still put a photo down here and then do your journaling about the photo in the pocket. So that's kind of cool. Then this flips out. And we've got a wonderful pocket page here with a couple of photo mats and room for receipts or whatever you want to put in there. Then there's our center pocket. This is our accordion pocket that expands. And we've got a couple of photo mats in here. We've got a little folio with our April calendar. We've got a little belly banded folio that goes in there. So that is this pocket. And the final spot to look at is this little side pocket over here, which has our little die cut note card and then our six by six folio. So that's what we're making today, guys. Grab your pencil and paper so you can take notes and let's get our craft on. Before we get started, I wanna show you how to cut apart these sheets. I know sometimes that's challenging. So I like to bring in my rail cutter or precision cutter, whatever you have. Mine is a Fiskars, but there's nothing magical about that. It's just what I have the coupon for. So I'm gonna put this in my cutting tool with the branding strip on the right. And I'm just gonna cut off the branding strip and I'm gonna throw it away. Then I'm gonna come down and I wanna be just a tiny bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe even a sixteenth of an inch above the border on our daisy image. And I'm gonna cut. And then this border piece, See, we can use that on a pocket or on a side of a page. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and I'm going to line this up I want to get this big long piece of this floral image. So I'm lining up right along the edge. I cut the scallop off the calendar. I don't want the scallop. So I'm just going to go straight up like this to the top. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it. I'm gonna come just up above the scallop here and cut. And now we've got this piece and this will make a great border. Now we can flip this. And I know this is a lot of moving it around, but because of the way these are laid out, you kind of have to do this unless you just wanna cut them all by hand, which I do not wish to do. All right, so now I've got a straight edge here. I'm gonna leave that little border and I'm gonna cut. And I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna cut. Okay, and this goes on our front cover of our folio. I'm gonna put this back in here just to save time later and I'm gonna trim that little, um, this little piece off. I don't need that. But I will keep this little strip because we can use these little pieces as accents. So there's that. All right. So now I have to make sure I'm straight. And I'm focusing on the border piece with the butterfly. And I'm going to cut. These I'm going to cut out with my old trusty Fiskars stamp edged scissors. This piece, I'm just going to whack it out here. But this piece I actually fussy cut so I can get around this butterfly. Okay, so there's that. These three pieces... This one I fussy cut around and I leave a little white border. I'll just give you a quick fussy cutting lesson. You wanna think of your paper as the steering wheel on your car and you turn the paper and you hold the blade steady. 
because I'm right-handed, I angle my blade slightly to the right so my eye can see where I'm going. And then the steering wheel automatically turns the paper the way it's supposed to go. And you end up with a nice smooth edge instead of a really choppy edge. And I am leaving a little bit of a border on this. But the only time I move my scissor is when I have to reset the blade, like I've run out of blade, so I have to reset it. So I'm going nice and slow, so you can see. Now these two pieces, one of them you can cut out with a circle die or you can freehand cut it just like I showed you, or you can use a punch. So this brings us down to our April calendar, which I'm gonna cut the scalloped edge off here. And I'm gonna cut the scalloped edge off here. So we're just trimming everything up nice and neat. And if you have this, and you'll do the same thing with your eight by eight sheet, um, you get this all done in advance, and then it you can just keep moving with your project. And you have these in a pile and you can pull them as you need them. So again, on this tag, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a border. Like not even a 16th of an inch, just really a skinny border. Okay. Well, I cut that one a little close, but. Sometimes it's a lot harder to do things on camera than it is. So once I've done this, I just come in with my scissors and trim out these corners. Okay? And then the same thing with Joyful. I'm just going to trim around it with a little bit of a border. All right? So go ahead, do that exact same thing with your 8x8 cut apart sheet. We're gonna get started building the base of our folio. And for this, you're going to need two eight and a half by 11. And I'm using this Autumn Rose Heavy cardstock from Paper Tray Ink, but use whatever you have in your stash. And you need two sheets of that. And then you're gonna take two more sheets and trim them to eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So these are eight and a half by 11. These are eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. On one, of your eight and a half inch sides, you're going to put down one quarter inch score tape. And you wanna get this as straight as you can because we're going to use this as a guide to line up our papers. And I know this is hard to see on the camera, but you can actually, if you get your tape put down nice and straight, you can use that edge so that you line everything up just so. And then you end up with this beautiful, long panel of your paper. Now bring in your scoring tool, and we're going to score this from the left. And this is a big piece of paper, so I hope I'm getting it in the frame okay for you. Looks good. All right, we're gonna score this at four. And again at four and three eighths. And I don't have an eighth inch score mark there, so I'm just going in between, making a mark, and then I move my paper and I score. So we want three eighth inch spines. I'm gonna fold into that four and three eighth inch score line, and then I'm going to score it at eight and a half. and at eight and seven eighths inch. And again, I'm just making my mark and then I move my paper so that I can score. I'm actually gonna flip this so that 
um, when you fold scored paper, you want to score into the bumpy side. So you'll just get a more accurate fold and your paper is less likely to crack. So now fold on your scored lines and burnish it down so that it's nice and straight. So this is our pocket, this is our front flap, here's a 3 8 inch spine, here's a 3 8 inch spine. Now bring in your 8 and a quarter by 8 and a quarter and we're going to score one at 7 and 3 quarters. And this is the flap. that's going to go on the right, okay? Then we're going to score this one at one half. And this is the flap that's going to go on the left. So fold your flaps, the left one folds toward the left and the right one folds toward the right and you wanna line these up with the center panel of your folio. And I'm just centering these up so that they're right even, top and bottom, and it takes a minute. Don't be in a hurry. Then I'm gonna take my score tape off the flap. I'm just gonna fold this over and connect it. So here's our left hand flap, and you can see we're all perfectly lined up along the left. Then we're just gonna repeat this with our right hand flap. And you can bring in a little ruler um, to help you make sure that you're at the same spot over here on the right as you were on the left. Move your score tape, make sure you're butted right up against it and then just press it in place. Now we want to score in a 3 eighths of an inch spine here. So I've just lined this up on my scoring tool and now we can fold this. And what this allows us to do is, you know, put things in the pocket inside. And I just find it easier to score this in after the fact, I find um, that I'm less likely to put my flap in upside down. So I'm just lining this up. This is three eighths of an inch right here. And then I can just fold it. And this way we don't have a lot of problems. Now we're gonna make our accordion pocket gussets. And I've got two sheet, two little pieces of one and a quarter by three and seven eighth inch cardstock. And we're gonna score each of these. I'm lining it up on my scoring tool. I'm gonna go three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna go three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to move it. I'm going to score it three-eighths of an inch. All right. So lining this up. Now we're going to accordion fold this back and forth. Bring in your folio and open it so that all the flaps are open. And here's our pocket flap down here 
on the bottom. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my adhesive and I'm going to put it right along the edge of my pocket on each side. And I'm staying pretty close to the edge. So you see how you have open sides here and folded sides here? You want the folded sides to go against the cut edge of your pocket. And this doesn't go all the way completely flush to the bottom. That's so we have room to fold it. So once again, see here's your folded, here's your open. Folded edge goes along the cut edge of your paper. And just use your finger to line it up nice and straight. So now you put adhesive on this top flap and adhesive on this top flap. And you fold this up. You want to make sure that you're clear of your score line here. Okay, so now you've got this nifty little accordion pocket that will expand to allow you to put receipts or photos or whatever you choose to put in there. And then see, your flaps are scored so that they'll fold over it. The next thing I want to do is set our magnets in place for our inside flaps. So I'm working with basic gray large magnetic discs and you can still get these I think at joanne.com. Um, that's where I usually so I've got buy my one. right hand flap page. And I've got my magnet. I've peeled off the adhesive. And I'm going to set this in so that it's about an inch inside from the inside edge and I'm going to press that down and then to secure it I'm going to take a little piece of score tape just to make sure that if someday that adhesive fails I'm still okay so I'm going to take that was a negative magnet now I take my positive magnet and you see how it snaps right on top of that I'm going to peel the adhesive off the back or the liner off the back. I'm going to line my left hand page up where I want it to be so that my spine is flush with the outside edge. I'm going to bring this page over, do the same, whoops, do the same thing here, line everything up, tuck everything in nice and straight, and then I'm going to press it into place and lift it and see now those magnets meet where I want them to meet and I'm going to do the same thing over here the reason I use these strong magnets is that we're going to have layers of paper over these magnetic closures and I want them to hold so see we're nice and lined up and everything is where I want it to be so we're good going to create our cover art and I've cut from my cream cardstock because it's just so pretty uh, with that daisy paper. This is eight and a quarter by just over eight and a quarter. All right, just like a hair over. And then instead of using my botanical paper, I'm going to use this moonlight blue because all you really see is the edge. So this is eight and an eighth by eight and an eighth. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive in the center because I like to stitch these up on my sewing machine and I don't want to stitch into glue. That'll kill your sewing machine real fast. But by putting a little bit of glue in the center, it allows me to line up my margins and get a nice straight border and it will stay that way while I'm stitching and I don't have to worry about it. All right. 
Then instead of using a whole piece of my eight by eight, I cut a four inch by eight inch piece of it. And I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily make mitered corners. So you've got your two pieces and you're going to lay one over the other so that it's perpendicular. Then come in with your scissors, make sure everything stays lined up and cut from the inside corner to the outside corner. So see, this will match up the way you want it to. And then you're just gonna repeat this on each corner. So again, because I'm gonna stitch this, I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive and I'm gonna line my first corner up so that my border is even and straight. Then I'm gonna come in with my second piece. Oops. And line up those corners. So here you can see I've stitched my outer frame onto my paper. I'm just going to take a little bit of adhesive where it's sticking up because I want those corners to be really secure. So you can do this as well on yours. But I like to do this after I've stitched because this way I don't get all that mess into my sewing machine. So there we go. Now we're gonna put this cover together. So I matted the daisy on a slightly, just barely larger piece of cream and on a piece of our rose and stitched around it on my sewing machine as well. This is gonna go lined up right along here, okay? Or actually, sorry, other way. Right along this side and we want it even top and bottom. Then I took the April calendar from my eight by eight and I matted it on a little piece of cream and a little piece of our autumn rose. And we're gonna line this up right with that little line that's below the, um, days of the week, just like that, okay? Then we're gonna take a little piece of this that we trimmed out from the eight by eight. And I'm keeping the scallop side in. I don't want the scallop side, I want just this pretty
border. And we can come down about a half an inch. I'm gluing that back behind. And trim it like that. Then along the bottom, I am going to use the scalloped edge. trim this here. Now I'm going to put my adhesive all along Okay, I'm just going to press that into place. I've got my little 8x8 eight eight cheerful. It's going to go right up in this corner like this. All right, then we have our chipboard joyful. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of, of uh, foam tab on this outside edge just so that it will sit nice and level. And I've got this sweet little butterfly from the die cut ephemera. I'm going to put that right there. I've got our little four, which I think I want it to be right there. Just like that. I went into my stash and I found some of these pretty little rhinestone gems. And let's take that one and put it right here over the tag hole. And let's take some sequins. Finished. Now we can set this aside and go to work on the inside of the folio. Now we're going to do the top flap, the top and side flap, and I've cut an 8 and 3 8 by 8 and 3 8 inch piece of this Kaiser Craft paper. This has the little floral on the back. And then I also cut 
a six and a half by eight and three eighth inch piece of the gingham from that same Kaiser Craft collection. And I scored a half inch flap on the right hand side. And we're gonna line this up and just wrap that flap around the back of our paper and then glue this in. Then I went into my Prima papers and I cut out this little lavender water piece and we're gonna put adhesive, just a thin bead along the very top, the very bottom, and the left hand, the right hand side, sorry. And this is gonna glue over here as a little pocket, a quick little pocket. And then in the pocket, we're gonna put the postcard, also from that Prima collection. And then we've got this sweet little daisy from the die cut ephemera, graphic 45. And we're gonna put this down right here. Then along the top, we're gonna to take this word that says friends and do it just like this. Okay, take this doily and line it up on your cutter and cut it in half. And we're gonna put adhesive just along this little leading edge Use the gingham to help you line it up nice and straight. Actually, let's go up higher. Let's go up just under where it says friends. All right, so now we've got a little turn tab there and we can use this for another turn tab. And I'll find something to cover up that little boo-boo. You won't have that because you'll think before you craft. From your Graphic 45 dies and the Kaiser Craft paper, cut out this little file folder with the green dot and the lace. I What I've done is I have put a magnet back behind the wheel of my bicycle and then I lined a magnet up on the back, just like we did when we were lining up the magnets for our pages. It's the same procedure. And we're gonna glue this down right at the bottom of this page, just like that. And then I used another Graphic 45, another one of those decorative dies, and I cut out this little strip of the blue gingham. Now we can take this and glue our bicycle down, just like this. And it will automatically go to where that um, magnet is on the back. And now look, this will flip down. So that's kind of fun. And then inside here, also from the Prima, I cut out Tales of Us. And that's why I use the heavy magnet so that this will stay in there the way it's supposed to. I cut a little three and three quarter by five and a quarter scrap of my journaling, of my cardstock. And we're gonna create a journaling spot on the back of this. This helps to cover up those that greeny tint that I don't really feel like goes very well with this paper collection. And then I'm gonna take my butterfly tab from the Kaiser Craft ephemera pack and stick it in like that, like a pull tab, all right? Just a fun little detail. And then that just sits in there, just like that. All right, over here, I've got this pretty little window and this is gonna go up in this corner. Then I've got the word beautiful that I want to go along the bottom. And 
like that. And then this little piece of lace right along the top. Just like that. So over here on this page, this is what we're going to do. I used the Graphic 45 die and our green paper to make this sweet little ATC envelope. So here's our little envelope and I cut out a couple of little images from the um, Kaisercraft collection. And I fussy cut this title. I wanna position this where I want it. I think maybe we have to go over this way a little bit. Yes. And I'm going to glue this, the edges of this down. because I want to be able to pull the envelope out. Okay. So see, we can, we can pull this in and out and then to hold it on the bottom so that it doesn't fall, I took this floral cluster And we're going to glue just this bottom corner down like this. So this holds it in place on the bottom and this holds it in place side to side and then we can pull it in and out. And front flap page and what I've done is I took a scrap of my blue paper my blue gingham check and I cut this to six inches by eight inches and then I took a piece of my blue cardstock and I cut this to four and three quarters by eight inches and then I took this piece of our floral this was a scrap and I'm not too worried about the direction because it's kind of an all over and it's really fine. I made sure the butterfly was right side up. That was what I paid attention to. And this is four by seven and three quarters. And I glued that down here. And then this little chipboard piece that I think is from Cottage Life. So flip this open. Because this piece was short, because this page is um, actually... seven and a quarter, um, and this was only six, I took a large sticker border from the Kaiser Craft Collection. Now, if you don't have this, you can put a little scrap of the flower market paper over here and it'll be just fine. On this inside flap, let me move things so we can see what we're doing. I cut a four by six panel of the botanical patterns and solids and I'm kind of centering this up then we had fussy cut this butterfly border out and I trimmed this to a width of four and this is going to go just like this and then our postage stamp with the sweet little blue flowers. I'm just going to put the adhesive on the bottom and I'm going to put this down here so the photo can slip back behind it. Okay. Then on this page, find your joyful label from the 12 by 12 and mat it on a larger piece so that you have room for flaps and score along there and make a little pocket. And this is going to go down. I'm going to center it up. At the bottom of this page. 
And then from our scraps, I've got this piece. I found this piece of blue. This was just a scrap on my table. It's a little over three by about five and three quarters. And then I found another scrap of the rose and cut it, of course, smaller. This is just under three, like two and seven eighths almost by a, almost five and five eighths. So these are just scraps. I went, oh look, these will layer. So you can, you can probably find scraps on your table that would do the same thing. I'm gonna layer this over. And then I took a scrap of my Kaiser Craft paper and I cut this to about not quite two and seven eighths by not quite five and a half. And this is gonna go down. And I'm putting the floral border at the top. Then we've got this other little wee butterfly. This is from the eight by eight. So this will mimic what's on the flap, which is always a fun thing to do. It's always a good design tip to repeat designs. It creates like a feeling of cohesiveness, right? Then we're gonna take our cheerful from the 12 by 12 and glue that here. We're just creating like a little marker. A little scrap of gingham and you don't have to do the gingham if you don't want to but I think it kind of finishes it off nice and it was actually just the right width this was literally laying on my table and I picked it up and boom it worked so it's always nice when that happens and then from the die cut ephemera I'm going to put bloom along the bottom Isn't that pretty? Just simple and sweet. This goes in our pocket. Along with this little butterfly tab, this is a great little journal spot from Kaiser, the Kaiser Craft Collection. And then I have our other large postage stamp from the 12 by 12. And that completes this page. Now that we've done our first flap page, let's open this up to the second flap page. And for this, this is another flap page, and I've cut a seven by eight inch piece of our pink botanic from uh, Flower Market. And then I cut a four and three quarters by seven and a quarter of our blue, and I scored a half inch flap and put it around, all right? So that's the basis for this page. I'm gonna take my score tape off my magnet, the little liner, and I'm just gonna line this page up and glue it down. Just like this, okay? And that gives room for this flap to go. Now, I took that other half doily and I glued it behind the flap. Got this piece of our designer paper. And I'm gonna cut a little banner flag, a fishtail banner, on the end of it. And I'm gonna glue this down along the bottom right here. Nothing fancy, just a little something something. Then locate your little three by four card, okay? And I put gussets on the back, only this time I've made them bigger. I, you know how normally I don't want my gussets to show? This time I do, because I'm trying to expand 
this three by four so that it can be a pocket for the reverse side. So I just came out a little and you can see how this enlarged it. Now we're gonna glue this down I'm going to take this little punched out circle and put it right there on the corner. This goes in the pocket. I've matted this tag and it goes in the pocket. See how nicely that works? Then I've got this postage stamp. And these are from the 8x8. And this postage stamp and a sweet little butterfly that goes in between them okay so that finishes that page so you can put you can actually put like a 4x4 four four photo up here and if you wanted to you could take a little you know a little square piece of white for journaling over here if you wanted to but that's all we're gonna do there let me pull this over, this great big folio. So now on our little turn page, we've got our half doily here. And before I glue my liner down, I'm going to put the another half doily matched up to it. So we don't have like a raw edge there. Then I have a scrap of this blue stripe that I've cut to four inches wide and I don't know it's maybe six inches tall but it's a little short is the point and I went into my ephemera from the flower uh, shop from Kaiser Craft and I found this cute little picket fence and I scored in the sides and added a gusset on the bottom and this is going to go right here at the bottom of the page. Look how cute that is. This little tag, Live Life in Full Bloom, and then this little sentiment that has a little posy on the top is a pull tab. So you still have room here for a photo, but you've got some little journaling spots down here. And then at the top of the page, I've got these two die cut daisies from graphic 45 flower market and those can go right up there so what we're doing is we're pulling all the different designs together we're pulling these two collections together by mixing and matching the different elements and now we have this page this is the inside of that flower and I found a working with scraps now so it gets exciting seven by four it was actually seven by eight and I cut it in half to two seven by four inch pieces and this is from the 12 by 12 and one of these is gonna go get centered up here at the top like that then I went into my patterns and solids and I believe this is from cottage life but it might be from Flower Market. I'm not sure. Either way, it looks gorgeous with this pattern. And I cut this to, I left the branding strip on and I cut it to four and five eighths. And then I scored along the branding strip. And the width, of course, is eight inches because you always go an inch wider. And then I scored my little half inch flaps, just like we always do, trimmed out the corners. And this is going to go down as a lovely, lovely pocket. So lining that up. Then I've got a couple of photo mats to go in here. And I've got, I fussy cut this cute little bicycle from the Kaiser Craft um, collection. And I trimmed out this ruler. And I'm gonna show you, it's too short for the pocket, but this is a great trick. You can do this for all kinds of things. Well, first I'm going to put my place my bicycle where it's going to go. And then see this can come right here. And I tore it in half. 
and the other half can go right here just like that and now I can glue my bicycle down isn't that cute over here to the right hand inside page and this is where it starts getting challenging because I start running out of material and I actually cut this pocket too short so I had to go in and rework it and to cover up where I joined it I did this little piece of designer paper but it's going to be just fine here's that other four four by seven inch piece of our designer paper and we're going to glue this down on the left take the liner off my magnet and then I'm going to come in with my pocket which needs to be cut nine inches tall and this was I want to say four something inches this is Kaiser Craft but I want you to see how beautiful these two papers look together. They are, they're really, really gorgeous together. Oops, should be paying attention to gluing and not talking here. Actually, that's a problem. So I realized with my magnet placement, this was going to cause a problem because um, stuff wouldn't go in the pocket like I wanted to. So to remedy that, I'm going to rework my magnet on top of my pocket. Um, you know, sometimes I can't see the end from the beginning. <laughs> so I make little mistakes like this, but things can always be fixed. I'm just cleaning this magnet up. All right. I'm going to show you how to fix this. We're going to go ahead and close this flap where our other magnet is and it's right there okay so now i'm going to close this page over and press it in place there's still enough adhesive on there i think that it will grab our magnet and if not then I can fix that all right so I'm going to put a fresh piece of score tape all right make sure my pages are positioned the way I want them to be Line them up, press down, there we go. All right, so there's our new spot for so our So I put magnet. a little piece of score tape over my magnet. I'm gonna pull this off. I took this darling little butterfly and I'm gonna line this up. I put a little string through the top and we're gonna put it right there. And then I'm gonna take this little word that says, follow your heart. So this does not look like an accident now, it looks deliberate that's the trick okay so we're good down here on the bottom I'm gonna take I die cut my little uh, note card and envelope with the graphic 45 die and some of this pink botanical paper this is gonna go right down at the bottom
Here's the little tag with a little butterfly pull tab on it that goes in there. And that takes care of that. In this pocket is our six by six folio. And I've covered it with, I had to piece together my gingham, but you really can't tell. It's so cool how that worked out. And I tore a little piece of my border that I had left over, matted the daisy image, and the inside is lined. So this now can go in this pocket and it won't, uh, that magnet won't interfere. And also this will clasp better. So, you know, we ended up with a better design. I'll remember that moving forward. center pocket and I took this eight by four and three quarter inch piece and I matted it on an eight and a quarter by five inch piece of my blue and this is going to fill in any gaps that we might have and it also gives it a nice finished look. So this is going to slide into the pocket and we're going to glue it down just below the fold. And I'm sorry if my head got in the way, I had to see what I was doing. Then down here on the bottom, I've got one last piece of this blue gingham. And this is eight and a quarter inches by three and five eighths. And I know that I'm not even along the top, but we're gonna fix that. I've got my little half doily. Well, let me bring this in. This is a sticker from the Kaiser Craft. So now we're gonna make this even. All right guys, so to finish out this center pocket, I've just added a couple of little ephemera pieces here. And then in the pocket, I took some four and a quarter by six and a quarter pieces of our cardstock and just covered it with four by six panels of patterned paper where I had borders left. I'm almost completely out of this month's paper. I added those. Here's a sweet one with the gingham. I put this little Oh Happy Day ephemera piece up here. And then our April, I pieced together some of my autumn rose and made a little tiny folio. So if you don't have to piece, you're going to want your paper to be, I think it's 10 and a half, yes. 10 and a half by three and a half, and then just score it and have it five and a quarter and add your pieces. But I had to piece stuff together, it was a little tricky that and then I made sort of like a little seed packet. I added a belly band and I cut this to three and a quarter by 12 and then I scored at four and a quarter and eight and a half. So you've got room in here for little photos and a little bit of journaling and I just put some images from the Kaiser Craft collection and then this little belly band goes on the top like that and I think that's it. I don't think well, here's what we could do. We could take this bloom where you're planted, and this will be the crowning touch on the belly band. This will finish it off, okay? Just like that. And then this goes back in here. So here we go. We did it. We made another one. We almost ran out of paper, but we didn't, so that's cool. And we were able to fix our mistake with the magnetic flap, which also is great. I'll remember that for next month to put that magnet on top of the pocket as opposed to under the pocket. Now all we have to do is add our cover. So get everything lined up good and straight. Let's bring in our cover place your adhesive and I always like to put the adhesive along the stitching because um, I think it helps hold everything in place a little bit better. Cover. Oh this is a pretty one you guys. This is so pretty for April with this pink and blue and cream color palette. Okay. 
And I think I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock to cover the back where we joined our paper, just so it looks a little more seamless. And um, it'll kind of finish everything off, and it also makes the folio a little bit stronger. But there you go, guys. April flower market folio. This one's really beautiful. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. If you hung with me to the end, you deserve a prize. And I guess the prize is you know how to make the folio. All right, I'm going to clean up this mess and then going to get my craft done. Thanks for joining me. Bye.